Hello students, today we are going to study the basic concepts of phase contrast microscopy. So phase contrast microscope, this is used for studying the unpigmented living cells. Why? Because in bright field microscopy, there is actually a, a comparatively relatively less contrast between the cell structure and the water surrounding water so uh, to create a better contrast we can use phase contrast microscopy this microscopy actually converts the slight difference in the refractive index and cell density so that this could be uh, the slight variation in light intensity uh, helps in studying better structures with phase contrast microscope uh, so this enhances the contrast between intracellular structures uh, with slight differences in refractive index and it's an excellent way to observe living cell. This is a rare figure for phase contrast microscope. Uh, here you can see there is a condenser which has an annual stopper. Now this annual stopper it's actually an opaque disc with as you can see there is a thin transparent ring. Uh, this actually helps in producing a hollow cone of light now when this hollow cone of light it passes to the cell to the specimen some light rays which pass through the cell specimen actually they are bent due to variation in the density and refractive index within the specimen and so they are retarded one by fourth wavelength so these are the diffracted rays which are retarded one by fourth wavelength after passing through the object. The undeviated ray which actually missed the specimen, it strikes this phase ring. You can see this is a phase ring and uh, this strikes the phase ring in the phase plate and uh, whereas this deviated light, the refracted one, this misses the phase ring. So when they pass through the phase ring, the undiffracted ray, the direct or you can call them as direct light rays, they are advanced 1 by 4 of the wavelength as they pass through the phase ring. So because of this, the deviated and the undeviated waves, they are about 1 by half wavelength out of the phase and so they cancel each other when they come together to form the image. So the background formed by the undeviated light is bright while the stained object appears dark and well defined. This is another figure which shows the same concept. We have the condenser. The consent, uh, condenser with the help of this annular stopper, it produces a hollow cone of light. There are two rays, the diffracted one and the undiffracted one. Diffracted ones are the ones which passes through the specimen and the undiffracted ones are the direct rays. Then we have the face plate. Because of this face plate, the undiffracted light is advanced 1 by 4 and so there is a total difference of half because of which the two rays cancel each other and finally an image is formed. This is Another way of representing it, we have this bacteria which is the specimen, this is the ray which is deviated one by four since it is passing through the sample. This is another ray, undiffracted one which misses the specimen, it passes through the face plate and is advanced one by four. This is how the two rays are one by two wavelength out of the phase and so they cancel out each other. So. This phase contrast microscopy, this is used to study microbial motility, the motion the, of the microbes, the shape of the living cells and bacterial components such as endospores and fusion bodies that contain polyhydroxybutyrate, polymetas, phosphate, sulfur or other substances. These are clearly visible because they have refractive indexes markedly different from that of water and so Phase contrast microscopy is also used to study eukaryotic cell structures. This was all about phase contrast microscopy.